Well, Joseph Z, it's great to have you on Charisma News. And we met at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention in person. And uh, we connected and you had a very encouraging prophetic word for me that has, that has stuck with me. It, it encouraged me. And um, just some of the things that you said in that, we'll, we'll talk about that off air. But uh, it was it really resonated with me. And so I know that you operate in the prophetic. And in just a little bit, I'd like to talk about how God led you to uh, to really use that gift to not just that gift, but that calling on your life as a prophetic voice. But you're more than just a prophetic voice giving people encouragement. You, God's giving you some prophetic strategies that we want to discuss today. So welcome to Charisma News, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. John, thanks for having me. You know, I'm a big fan and supporter of Charisma, what you guys have done, the way you represent truth in a wild culture. I just want to thank you and everyone at Charisma. I'm very privileged to be with you today. Well, thank you. It's our it's our honor to be able to, to talk with you as well. And, um, you know, the I just want to hear about your story. OK, there's there's a lot okay. of people that have a prophetic gifting or God speaks to um I, I, myself included, where sometimes God will speak to me something to share with somebody and it ministers to them. And I feel like, wow, this is, this is awesome. But it's not, um, it's not something that I would call an office. It's like something that I'm just relaying what God's saying, but you right. are, um, I mean, you're the background right behind you says prophecy live. So, uh, <laughs> that's a big part of the ministry that God's called you to. So let, let's talk about the prophetic and, um, how God speaks to you for the, for the office of the prophet. Well, you know, John, it started for me when I was very, very young and Amos chapter seven, it talks about how Amos said he was neither a prophet nor the son of a prophet, which that references the schools of the prophets. Mm -hmm. It represents the sons of the prophets, but it also may have implications that there is something about people in their legacy and DNA that can have prophecy in it. Mm. And in my case, when I was younger, I was about nine years old, I was walking through a field and I would be in the back acreage of this ranch I lived on and I'd begin to hear my voice audibly called over the trees, almost on the wind. And I heard it over and over and over again to the point that I'd run back home, I'd go talk to my father, I'd talk to people and say, what did you call me for? What, what did you want? And they'd over and over again say, I didn't call you, get back to work. Hmm. And this happened over and over again with me. And I realized then one day, as I realized some things, there was also negative voices that began to call me. And I thought, what is this all about? And I found out later as I prayed, studied the word in my salvation encounter, that a lot of times people that end up in psychic behavior, occultic stuff, difficult scenarios, actually might have a raw gift of prophecy hmm. that's in their DNA that they're born with. Now, everybody's not like that in the Bible. We could unpack all that, but everybody's not like that. But some people are, they're born that way. And so because of it, they have a raw gift and whatever voice gets them, mm. they become empowered by. And I'll tell you, I found out that I probably could have been down a psychic avenue. I probably could have gone down some mystical roads, but Jesus, thank God I had the encounter with Jesus that cut all that stuff off and the spirit of life in Christ Jesus came in me and the gift is used for him. Amen. And and more empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so it's an interesting journey. So for years, we've gone around the world, we've trained people in prophecy, we've taught on prophecy. And there's one scripture I like to talk about because I've had encounters with everything from entities to seeing things, to hearing things, to predicting major global events. We prophesied uh, in 2020 that Roe versus Wade would be overturned by the Supreme Court. We have those things date stamped. We prophesied that Donald Trump would not win the election in 2020. And uh, we came out and said it because I had two visions and dreams about it where I went on record and said it wow. and uh, we put it out and I said it's he will lose by a technology he'll lose by a technology even though it's not right how he loses he'll lose by a technology which I believe it was hijacked whatever that being said all these things God has shown us but I really believe one key verse and that's first Corinthians chapter 4 verse 6 John that says learn from us not to think beyond what is written and more than anything at this time We've got to have a right sizing in the prophetic yeah. because so much of the prophetic that's going on is based on subjective things, wild encounters, all that. And I'm not against those things as long as they point people directly to Jesus Christ. Because we know Revela Revelation 19.10, it says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy or the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus. 
prophetic gifting, all of it must point directly to Jesus Christ and bring glory to him. Amen. So that's just a, a quick snapshot. So our family's right. that way. We've, we've worked in prophecy for years. Well, I've got a few questions based off of what you just talked about and, and a couple of comments okay. there too. Uh, the way that you described your calling or your you're receiving a call in a, in a way it reminds me of the prophet Samuel as, as a young boy hearing sure, his yeah. name and responding to it. And I just love how you went and you were, and you were told, yeah, we weren't calling you, but you were hearing your name, Joseph, Joseph. Um, oh yes. you know, I had a similar experience like that when I was in, in high school, when I was studying Did you uh, really? in, in home, doing my homework. But uh, unfortunately, I thought I heard my father's voice calling me, but unfortunately it was just um, something in the music that I was listening to in the background. It, <laughs> it sounded like there was John and I've had other people. <laughs> we could have really run with that, John. I know we could have, we could have, but I, just, I had to, it was an audio adrenaline song that was just playing at that point. And it just, Come it sounded like my father's voice calling me. and go with me to my father's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm glad that yours was you were outside and, and there was nothing going on and there was no CD playing because you know that it was because you went and you tested it really you tested oh, yes. that and yes. you said I'm going to number one respond and then be and then let it be a test as, as well and so well the backup encounter to that John is that another voice came to me and I was actually on an ATV and the voice came the similar way yeah. and it kept getting closer and closer until my German shepherd bristled with his hair and he ran away in fear. And this is a dog that rescued me from a bull trying to maul me as a kid, jumped on this bull. This dog was fearless. Oh, wow. And he bristled with fear and ran away. And this voice got so close to me, it finally said my name right here, Joe. And, um, wow. And it was, uh, it was a dark presence. And the Lord began to show me that this is where many people begin to think an angel speaking to them, mm -hmm. an angel of light, those kind of things. And so I was able to differentiate that by the word of God. Wow. That's... That's fascinating. And so how old were you at this point? Nine. I was nine years old. You were nine years old. Wow. Yep. Nine years old. And it had many encounters like it. And I, I don't mind talking about encounters because it, it, it helps people right size some of their experiences sure. and brings it into the written word of God. So we can disciple our emotions. We can re, retrain our, our thinking according to Romans chapter 12. But I had this encounter and I'll tell you, I had many like it. I was standing at a graveyard one time where uh, they were burying a relative of mine and they began to read from a journal that they had written in. And suddenly as they're reading from the journal, I'm this nine-year-old kid. And all of a sudden I found myself standing in her bedroom where she was writing the journal as she was passing on. And I thought, why am I seeing this? And I began to have this encounter, I began to weep profusely at this graveside. And people thought I was just having an emotional experience. But I got to tell you, I had mm -hmm. these prophetic things that would happen. And I've learned to go to the word of God, train this, and do not go beyond what is written and bring people back to the glory of Jesus. Because there's a lot of prophetic nonsense out there also. I agree with that. And I love how you said, do not go beyond what is written. And that's, that's really important because yes, people have, there's been a lot of people, especially recently, that are, you can, you can say that their imaginations are getting the best of them. They might've heard an inkling of what God said, but they've then tried to explain and add on to that. You know, the Bible is very yeah. clear about not one jot or tittle will be, at, will be taken away from this, but we're also, we're also not supposed to add to this as to this revelation Amen. as well. Um, and so we're seeing a lot of these things and you, you mentioned the, uh, the re-election of, of Donald Trump and how you yes. you actually had a prophetic word that he would not be re-elected. And Correct. I mean, I remember at that point looking for prophetic voices that would actually that were actually saying what you what you said. And I wasn't aware of you at that point, but it was there wasn't anybody that was saying that this is what we were going to what was going to happen. Could you tell me because it could you tell me what that was like? Because Sure. You would have had to be going upstream against the current of the <laughs> prophetic, uh, let's just say the, the, the prophetic flavor of the day. Um, and yeah. uh, so I'm not trying to be cavalier with that, but uh, that's- Oh no, yeah. Yeah, so well, tell me about all, that respect... and, and, and yeah, just explain that to me. For sure. Well, first of all, I respect the prophets yeah. and I, I really do. I'm not, I'm not trying to say I'm better than them or they're better than me or any, that's not even remotely where I'm coming from with this. I just had an encounter that I know if I see it, I'm required to say it if God prompts me to. 
And I had an encounter where two separate times I woke up and as I was waking up, I had a morning day vision mm -hmm. and you kind of wake up, it's like you're half dreaming, half awake. And I was waking up into the day after the election mm -hmm. and I'd woken up and both times I saw Trump had lost. Mm -hmm. It came out in the news he'd lost. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, it is through a technology. It will be through a technology. So I personally believe all things equal, he won. He won, he should have won, all of that. But I do believe I saw what was going to happen, at least on the public stage. And so that's just something we recognize. And it's something we have to realize too. And I believe this, a lot of prophets have prophesied, yes, he won, he would win, he would do this. And I just want to share a quick thought with our audience. And that's this, there was two prophets in the Old Testament. One was named Ezekiel, one was named Jeremiah. Maybe mm -hmm. we've all heard of them. And they prophesied about a king named Zedekiah a king named Zedekiah, and their prophecies were contrary to one another, hmm. at least at first. And you say, well, how can that be? The prophets are supposed to be in perfect unity if God's really speaking. Well, you realize one of them had said, well, that King Zedekiah will not ever suffer from Babylon by being uh, killed there or taken advantage of by it because he was going to have a confrontation with Babylon, this King Zedekiah. What had happened is one of them prophesied he'll never see Babylon. Mm. The other one prophesied, he will die by the sword inside of Babylon. Hmm. So here we go again. One said, he will never see Babylon. The other said, he will die by the sword inside of Babylon. And Josephus, the church historian, was so troubled by this seemingly contradictory statement that he said both prophets were wrong. They missed it. Mm -hmm. And he threw them both out as not inspired. But if you read on in the word of God, you recognize here's the real story. King Zedekiah was captured by Babylon. The moment they captured him, John, they cut his eyes out. So he can't see. He couldn't see. And then he was led captive into the gates of Babylon where he was killed with the sword. So what you recognize is both were right, but at face value, how it was interpreted or presented seemed like it was a conflict of words. Wow. So there's things that we still have to wait to be, uh, to be unfolded. But the yeah. timing or maybe the just as Josephus was looking at this and saying, hey, we got to throw this out because right. uh, neither of these make sense. Um, right. You know, we're we might be dealing with some of those things as well and maybe some rogue rogue things as well. So regardless <laughs> of what is the, what is the outcome, we have to be like the Bereans. We have to search the Amen. scriptures. We've got to test Amen. it. Amen. Because we can't just take everything at face value and right. because we don't want to be going to the milk of the word. We want to be going to the meat of the word for, for our sustenance. So this is not just a, an opportunity for us to get a, a word that it feels good and it, it, it goes with what we want. We need to respond on what God, what is God actually saying? dive into the scriptures and compare it to what is actually written as you brought up earlier. So, well, John, you know, you're bringing up such great points and you realize in Matthew 24, Jesus told us, he said, in the last days, there'll be many deceivers. There'll be many mm -hmm. false prophets that rise and they will deceive, get this word, many. Yeah. They will deceive many. Now we could break down what that means, who is what, uh, but for the sake of time today, we'll just say, let's talk about the word deception or deceive. When the false prophets deceive, there's a meaning in the Greek when it talks about deceive. And that meaning, one of them is to cause to wander. Mm. People that listen to false prophets, false prophecy, and they're inundated with it. It's almost like you're looking at people that the lights are on, but nobody's home. And they're going from conference to conference to place to place. And they wander. There's like a spirit of wandering, ever learning, never coming into the knowledge, mm. uh, a form of godliness, but denying the real power of the gospel that brings change and discipleship. They never get rooted. Instead, they wander. They wander in life. They wander in revelation. They wander in who they're listening to and what they're doing instead of of saying, I know who I am. I know where I'm going. I'm clear eyed. I'm clear minded. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I think that's something that needs to be taught more and more, not in an attacking way, yeah. but in a healthy right sizing way. Right. And there's, we need to be able to help people along. You know, I, I love what Paul said in second Timothy to Timothy. He said, the things that I've taught you Make sure that you teach that to faithful men who can teach it to others. When That's there's a so breakdown good. in that process, we have mass um, biblical illiteracy. 
We have, you know, yes. people that are just wandering around as babes and they don't, they're not able to lead. And it's almost the blind leading the blind in a lot of cases. Right. And so we get ourselves right. into a lot of trouble and we look silly because we're not getting the right people to follow and we're not doing the work ourselves. And, Come on, John. But there is a lot to cover. And uh, w- my goodness, there's, a, there's so much that we need to be able to be discerning about. And one of the yes. things that I really want to talk to you about, because I watch some of your YouTube videos and some <laughs> of the things that, um, you know, we, we've just been talking about the spirit of prophecy and how to discern that. And right now in our world, the two things are in the news all the time. Um, AI is uh-huh. there's breakthroughs all the time. And, you know, chat GPT, you know, mid journey, deep fakes, um, all these things are very interesting. And the technology is fascinating on one hand, but deeply scary on the other hand, on the other side. Um, right. And then also there's this whole thing of aliens and UFOs showing up in the news. And it's almost like right. it's the backstory. And it's almost like we're, we're, we're going to let you know, but we're not going to tell you much about it. And so you have some experience about, about all of these things and God's been sure. revealing to you things. So let's, let's, let's dive deep a little bit here. Okay. So <laughs> let's have fun. Let's have some okay. fun. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> okay, and your John. YouTube channel, which I do, uh, I do appreciate. I do really enjoy well, it. You, you. you pull out the whiteboard and you are making notes and you're trying to help people understand what is going on in our world today. So help us understand yes. the benefits and the the drawbacks or the fears or the, the concerns with AI? Well, I'll start out with what the Lord showed me about AI. Please. Uh, back in 2017, 18, in that arena, I began to have these strong prophetic words, strong prophetic words about artificial intelligence and all this. And I didn't fully understand it. And around that same time, I think it was Facebook that created this algorithm or two talking programs that started to communicate. And they immediately, the first thing they did is they began to lock out the the developers and they locked them out and began to build their own code instantly and started talking in ones and zeros. I remember that. And they began to communicate with each other. And then they had to pull the plug on it because the first thing AI does is block everybody out and run their own show. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And at that time, I'd only looked into it because the spirit of the Lord had been ministering to me about it and said, it's not about the programs in the beginning. It's going to be who will develop it. And back in 2017, 18, Spirit of the Lord said there will be a silent step that takes place in 2018 and 2019. In 2020, you'll hear about it a little more and it'll go silent again. And that is when we need to intercede for the developers because whoever is programming this stuff is who's going to begin to run the future, really. Mm -hmm. And so I began to intercede over that. The Lord began to minister to me about Elon Musk, all these people. And then suddenly it comes out, I saw it would take a silent step, it would go silent and then take a large step publicly after 2020. And now here we are in 2023 and I'm seeing this unfold and I know clearly that um, there's going to be a form of augmented reality that goes so mainstream that people are involved in it because I had a vision about it. I was standing in the woods one day and these are interesting things that happened to me, but it's my language and I learned to work through it, John. But I was standing in the woods one day and I saw this giant creature begin to walk down this valley in the woods. And as it was walking down this valley, I'm looking at this and it wasn't scary. I knew it was a vision. And I'm looking at this giant creature and the spirit of the Lord quickened to me a word and said, augmented reality. And I said, well, what is that about? I didn't even know what that meant. And that was probably back in 18 or 19. Mm -hmm. And as I'm looking at this, the Lord said, this will go from what people plug into and suddenly it'll be a projection. They'll see it in reality. They're going to begin to turn this where you can do it. You're going to start to see where they can do films and movies on demand. You could demand or request a sequel to a film you want to see that's never been made and AI will make it for you in real time with a storyline you appreciate. Mm. And I began to see these things. I thought, well, what is this all about? And the Lord began to show me whoever runs the leading edge of this will lead the future. And this could indeed be what becomes the Antichrist or the Antichrist system. And I believe that's a very serious thing. So AI, the benefits is it's going to Uh, make a lot of people a lot dumber. Uh, The benefit of that is that they'll be able to look smart by doing their 
their work and written books and all that. When I write books, I refuse to use chat GPT. <laughs> but but uh, I want to say to you that also it's going to continue to take territory. We're going to find advancements. And that is the noose, so to speak. It'll solve illnesses. It's going to fix things. And one of the words I had is that it would map the universe. And I believe they're actually working on that through math and measurable ways. And AI will be if we don't get a handle on it, a noose. And I find it interesting, Elon Musk comes out and talks about it and says, oh, it's the biggest concern we have. The, spoken by the guy who has one of the number one AI companies mm -hmm. in the world and a developer in it, warning everybody as he's creating it. And that's a subject of concern. So that's what I see with AI. And I believe that we can pray. It can be used for the good, like television, anything else. Mm -hmm. But it's going to change the game over the next two years immensely. Yeah. And we as believers, especially, we need to use discernment. And one mm -hmm. of those things that I find it very interesting, I mean, working here at Charisma our, in our editorial meetings, we talk about AI articles a lot because we're seeing them pop yeah. up more and more. But you can yes. tell, like, there are clues that it is putting in there that it is written by AI and right. things down to it writes in a passive voice. Um, it wow. writes, it adds, it always uses the Oxford comma in lists. Um, <laughs> it does things where it actually creates its own sources and cite and citing material. So it wow. will actually, you know, say this person, uh, said this quote in their book, such and such. And that person yeah. in that book doesn't exist, but it needed and to that's create that. that's terrifying. That is very scary. And so just because you read something online doesn't mean it's it's true, you know. I Quoted think by Abraham Lincoln. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, on the that's, internet. <laughs> that, that's a great meme. And I think it's, it's, it's something that we're just – you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that's true. And it's like, wait a second, yeah. Abraham Lincoln could have never said that. Um, Come on, John. But it is, it's, it's very interesting that we have to be on guard all the time. The Lord, the Bible we says do. that we need to put on the armor of God every single day, you know, put the helmet of salvation on the, you know, the shield of faith, the, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the belt, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, yep. the belt Absolutely. of truth is what holds everything together. If we don't have the truth holding everything together, we're all going to fall apart and we're going to take those, those fiery animal, those fiery arrows from the evil one. If we're not yeah. careful and it's true. things like uh, mid journey and the artwork that AI is right. creating, they, right. From a distance, it looks good. As you get closer yes. to it, you find out that people have six fingers or three fingers or their faces are all weird. So we For need now. to always be looking at these things. But it's, it's yeah. interesting that AI is trying to create man in its image. But it's not able to create it because it's in God's image. We're in God's image. Well, that's so that's so powerful. And one of the things that I know the Lord spoke to us also, and this is encouraging about AI. So we talked about a little bit of the scary aspects to it, and it is very scary. We need to rest in the Lord and get really hold of it because we don't even comprehend what AI is. We can try to explain it, but it's going to quickly go past what we can comprehend. The other side to it is though, is that there is good developers. And mm -hmm. the Lord spoke to me back in 2020 that there would be a freedom tech that would come out. We prophesied that Twitter and Elon, there would be something about Twitter and Elon. Hmm. And with that same capacity with Twitter and Elon would also come a new freedom tech. Then you got guys like Mike Lindell, different ones that came out and did it. Trump brought out Truth Social and all of it. And what began to happen is a freedom tech. I believe there will be a freedom AI that will fight this liberal agenda that's being programmed into it right now, where hmm. they just basically are teaching it to only think like a woker. And, uh, on the other side, we're going to see we're going to see a freedom tech come to that also. So I have hope for that, yeah. and that's an important thing. So I see that coming. Yeah. So you said something earlier that I can't just let you pass over because you said <laughs> okay. two key words that are buzzwords in our community: AI and the Antichrist. So come on, explain yeah. this because I thought the Antichrist was supposed to be a person that rises up. Um, or the spirit of that, how you get a spirit in a machine uh, that's in a computer, it, it, break this down for us. Well, there's a whole lot we could get into, yeah. and however far we want to go down the bunny trail here, but <laughs> I want to simply say the Antichrist could be a person, and there's a lot in the scripture that points to that. But the more I read the Bible, and we realize the Bible's unfolding with its absolute truth, but it's only 
us who's understanding it more and more as we get closer to the end of the age. Some things that would have made no sense Mm -hmm. a thousand years ago make perfect sense today. And we're looking at that. And when you look at the beast system or the way that it is animated or the statue and the image of the beast and all these things and the mark and all the stuff that's involved with it, then you look at the last season we were just in with the mark of the beast precursor practice serum Mm -hmm. is what I like to call it, where people, you know, they're, they're just like, hit me, you know? Uh-huh. And um, and I'm not against people who had to do that, exactly, yeah. if you catch my meaning, yeah. but I'm against the system behind it. Sure. And so what we're seeing is a, a marshalling of thought, a marshalling of a predicated narrative that's already been pushed on the culture. Now you add artificial intelligence and you begin to go down a road of thought police. Now you have stuff inside people's bodies that can be absolutely marshaled, utilized, scanned, tracked, whatever, and tie that to a financial system with the new uh, central bank digital currency they're trying to push. Suddenly AI, which with its programming, could control control people's lives, it could control their destiny, control their direction, control their finances, control what they eat, unless they succumb to a certain mark predicated on what AI says it ought to have. And that to me sets up a whole system that either a man will be in charge of or artificial intelligence itself will step in like Skynet, Mm. step in like Skynet and begin to run things. And that indeed could be the Antichrist. Wow. That's a that's very interesting because you, you, the Bible talks about the beast coming to life, the image of the beast right. coming to life, and yeah. I've never thought about it like that before. And so, could be an augmented reality. It could be like these robots Elon's making that are just the first generation. It could be a lot of things. You see the advancements. You know, there's this big push for uh, uh, transgenderism, right? Mm-hmm. But transgenderism ultimately leads to uh, transhumanism. They're getting people to be used to being different than what they were first originated as, and they're getting used to that. So ultimately, it'll be pretty normal to just become basically symbiotic with machines and technology. And that's nothing new. The yeah. cult of Sybil did that in the Word of God. Rick Renner taught me that, <laughs> the cult of Sybil. And it was where men became women. And that's a, a New Testament thing. Wow. And so what we're seeing in, the, in our world today is, you know, we're, we're looking at the book of Revelation, you know, in the book of Daniel, uh, I think there's some prophecies in Ezekiel and what Jesus says as well about the end times. Oh, yes. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting. We're looking at these people that wrote this back in, you know, what John would have written that in 70 or just around before 70 AD Revelation. The things that he was seeing, he might, he probably didn't have the words to, uh, to convey that. And it's kind right. of, it's kind of like, um, in the movie, the, the Lord of the Rings, it's, right. uh, it's how you know, they, they needed to speak a phrase to open this door. And that literally right. the clue is speak friend and enter. And right. so they're trying to figure out what, what does this mean? What does this mean? And it's literally the word friend in the, in the ancient Elvish language. And all of a sudden it's just, just the simplest thing that opens it up. But we're, we're looking for complexity and something that's simple. And right. with the words that they were able to use, we're adding more to it, but we're seeing it. Uh, we're, we're seeing things through a, a glass dimly lit, basically. Well, there's a, there's a Latin word called sensus plenier. And sensus plenier means a deeper, fuller meaning. It was really coined by the Catholic Church mm-hmm. and all this stuff. But sensus plenier means something can happen at one time in history, but it can happen again. So you look at the prophecies in Daniel, you see that he was prophesying to kingdoms and times and seasons. And yet you also see part of that playing out in the book of Revelation. Jesus prophesied the destruction of the temple in mm-hmm. 70 AD. And then yet we see that it happened, it took place at that time, but it will also have implications for the future that we're living in. So mm-hmm. that sense is plenier, a deeper, fuller, repeated meaning. And when you're looking at these things, you know, there's so many deceptions that are coming. The answer is the same. And one of them is this alien UFO narrative. Yes. John. We were Let's talk about talking this. about this and this alien UFO thing. Do you mind if I comment on this? Please, please. The alien UFO thing, I've whittled it down to three things because I've prayed about this, I've researched it, I've looked into it, 
And what they're doing is dumbing down the culture so much. You have so much social media that is brainwashing people by one you know, short minute clip or 20 second clip or five second clip after another that's training people to think a certain way. Hollywood has trained people to think a certain way. So there are three things I think that aliens are that I whittle down to the word of God or what we can, what we can see in scripture. And the first one is I think it could be a strange technology that is by governmental entities or foreign adversaries series or unknown technology origins mm -hmm. that are totally of this earth, totally of humanity. Technology we don't fully have a grasp on, and yet we can see it around our skies right. that we can take photos of, we can empirically observe it. There it is. That's number one. The second one I believe that could be happening is a fake alien scenario, augmented reality stuff projections in the sky or things what they talk about, like if maybe your audience has heard this, but Project Blue Beam, where they blast things up in the sky, like the Spider-Man movie. Remember yes. the Spider-Man movie where yeah. he's fighting over in England? Magneto, and, uh, or not there's Magneto, a giant, um, yeah. Mysterio. Uh, Mysterio, that's, that's right, he's yes. fighting him. And, but it's drones projecting an image that had a lot of reality behind that image. I believe that is a precursor to a Project Blue Beam type of thing. When you see drones that go in the sky and they can write things in the air and do all kinds of amazing things, that's just what the public sees. There could be so much more to that. And why would they do that? Because whoever controls that narrative can unite the world under what they want. And I think there's a truth in that that will be more and more revealed or concealed to deceive the masses upon either the rapture or something else. Yeah, we, now, we saw the that in, point, in the in the movie uh, Independence Day, the original one that came out in the I think it was the, it was definitely the '90s, where you know all, basically the aliens stopped wars because <laughs> you know everybody was now against the aliens because we're under attack. You know this is that's, that's right. a common movie theme, and we see that over that's and right. over again. I mean, uh, the Arrival is one of those those movies that's that's like that as well. Very interesting movie. That's right. One of and my here favorites. here we are talking about it, John. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> here we are. Isn't that the one where they break their legs backwards and then they can run? Or, no, that, yeah, that's, uh, like that. I forget which movie that is. There's, there's been so many know. alien movies and we're, we're not going to get into a Siskel and Ebert type thing. Uh, here. George but, Lucas is here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, 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 but, but, uh, but it's, it's a very interesting thing where people are already getting used to this idea that if, when the aliens come, it's, it's no longer going to be us versus us. It's going to be us versus them and we're all going to be united. So, True. yeah, there's some interesting th biblical possibilities that could happen when the world is united. There is. And that's a pop culture training. It yep. is a mechanism to train the masses. Here we are talking about it. And most viewers know exactly what we're talking yeah. about because we've all been brainwashed and this has been pressed upon us. And even though I enjoy the entertainment, just like you do, it is a part of our culture that people think about. You know, imagine if we use that for the gospel, mm -hmm. people be thinking, well, that's Jesus. You know, we got to think about Jesus. But here we see, number one, I believe it was technology. This is part of the alien deception. Real tech. They're not talking about could be very true. Number two, Project Blue Beam type stuff where they project like Spider-Man or the movies we're mm -hmm. talking about. Number three, and this is the one that is the most nefarious and I think carries weight and this would deserve a lot of conversation, but it is the fallen angel narrative that broke out in Genesis chapter six, where the sons of God, these angels, these watchers, they came down and they cohabited with women, which is one of two things is either sexual relations. And they created these monster people like Goliath mm -hmm. called the Nephilim, or they've altered women's DNA to create things and they messed with animals, sure. all this stuff. And that technology, the way they came down, if you read the book of Enoch, which I do not think is canon, I actually deal with it, and we'd mentioned this earlier, but I deal with the book of Enoch in this book and why it's not Bible, but why it is something you can reference only to a certain degree. Mm. And some of the aspects you learn, we deal with angels, fallen angels. I talk about alien stories in this book that deal with it. This is called Servants of Fire. And uh, you can get it, uh, Pretty much anywhere. It's available pr for pre-release now or my website. Cool. So, um, and what's your website? Just but, what, as people are, are, you know, you just plugged your book. Let's let's tell people how to get it. So JosephZ.com. Yep. Well, is JosephZ.com. There we go. It's JosephZ.com. I had the Lord speak to me to write this one because, uh, you know, we all are thankful at Charisma. I'm so thankful for you guys. You sell amazing materials. And, uh, but I really had a word from the Lord to write this for now in this mm -hmm. time. And we deal with fallen angel technology. We deal with fallen angels and what their real purpose is and why they're trying to counterfeit the gospel, why they're trying to counterfeit things through lying signs 
it's lying wonders. And it's very possible, John, when you get into some of this stuff, that the reason God was so angry with the fallen angels that deceived mankind, taught them about the stars and astrology, taught them about the sciences and things that went against God's purpose, that ultimately led to the Tower of Babel. Hmm. We're seeing another Tower of Babel scenario take place today. And God is looking at this saying, okay, please don't fall for this. Get in the word of God. Begin to know the hour of your visitation. Fallen angels want to deceive, and I believe they have abilities to understand technology and multiple dimensions. And that's why you can see these alien craft appearing, disappearing. They have no mass, no weight. They can turn at 90 degrees when they're going several, uh, uh, nearly the speed of light sometimes, or mock whatever. Right. They can go and turn at a right angle. That is, it's just impossible. They do these things and you've got these experts that do, know, do not know God coming on and saying, well, this is what it is. It's massless. It's obviously from another planet or another universe. And what it really is, it just goes into this deception. So number one, it's a technology. Number two, it is a governmental led project blue beam. Number three, it could indeed be this fallen angel deception to deceive the masses because you got even writings in the Vatican, other places where they say, if these things begin to appear, they're waiting for visitors from another dimension or space that they would baptize us or we would baptize them. That's on the record with the Vatican. Hmm. They also have a telescope in Arizona called Lucifer that they're looking into space and they're watching some of these things right now. And they're on record saying that. Wow. And so when you look at this type of narrative, you realize there is something going on. And I believe this, and I'm going to prophesy again about this. We're going to see more and more disclosure on UFOs to the point the video, the graphics become so clear, so believable that people will start to say we are obviously not alone in the universe and they will completely bring out disclosure until finally they reveal the truth. Mm. And the truth will be a deception that says we are your creators, we planted you here, we did all of it, but it goes all the way back to Genesis 6 <laughs> and it is a lying scenario by fallen angels that are rebelling against God and they are working for Lucifer and they want to begin to deceive the masses to lead people away from Jesus. And there's a lot of, a lot wow. of places that can go, but I believe that's the fundamentals of what we're seeing. Well, if what you're saying comes to pass as, as, as you've been prophesying, that is a, you know, we, we look at the story of how Lucifer and his fallen angels were cast out of heaven. The thing that, yes. that Lucifer wanted was he wanted to receive worship and he what did. better way to get worship than to, you know, the, the things that, that are happening in our world today, we've got, you know, the movies and music and all these things. There is a, there's the real, but then there's a counterfeit and the counterfeit leads to worship of the devil. If all of a sudden yes. you have these, uh, what you're saying come, come to pass, these, uh, these fallen angels come in, in a physical form, then people are already conditioned to worship it's something true. that they don't understand. And so it's that'll true. be, that'll be very interesting to see these things play out. Uh, I mean, you gave some very interesting three different scenarios there. Um, but you told me before we started recording that your wife had an experience with she some of this. Can we yeah. please talk about that? Because okay, John. I, I, I gotta, we gotta <laughs> unpack this. You, you okay. We're going to hang in there. So I detail that experience in this book, servants of fire. Um, but I, I really, I felt it was necessary to talk about. Um, and I, I don't like sensationalizing things because I think we're all going to stand before the Lord one day and he's going to say, you added to that. That wasn't real. Mm. And you know it. And uh, I take this really serious. So we've, I've had a couple very legitimate encounters, one of them angelic. It did not materialize to me, but I heard something and it really led me into an area that God was directing me. It was very important. Um, and another one that Heather had, my wife, Heather, um, is this scenario where in the middle of the night, we we're in the high Rockies in Colorado, we're in the middle of the night and we've been praying, seeking God. We've been dealing with warfare and witchcraft and people and all kinds of stuff. And one night in the middle of the night, she woke up because she heard a voice hit her in her mind and in her heart. And it was almost like an invasion, like it spoke to her and it said, Hey, come outside. And this voice kept saying to her, come outside. Now I'm asleep and she gets up and she, she had the Holy Ghost come on her and she got angry hmm. and she began to go outside. And this is, this is going to be wild for some viewers. And I have explanations for this. I've studied this stuff. 
she walks out of our bedroom, goes out and directly out of our bedroom with the mountain backdrop was a, a porch and a deck with a sliding door. As she's walking towards that, she's looking and in the light on our deck is standing a gray, a gray alien. They call a gray, had the big black eyes, the little guy you know, standing there and he was standing with his arms out to his sides and he was communicating with her without moving his mouth. Hmm. And he was communicating to her this way. And I know this is a wild story, but hang here yeah, with us, okay? okay? <laughs> and, uh, it's, uh, he's communicating to her, or it was communicating to her. And we at that time had a very large English Mastiff who also was not afraid, a very wonderful dog. And he was yelping and whining, looking at this thing. He was terrified. And uh, this sense of dread and fear filled the house. Now, I'm asleep. I didn't know any of this. But this sense of dread fills the house. It was a, a palpable, dark fear, she said. And my wife does not exaggerate. She's one of those people that is not a liar. She will. She is very true to what she says. And, and I've never had her exaggerate about anything. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, in this moment, she is looking at this. And she went up and sat by the dog and began to pet it. And she's looking at this entity standing on our deck. And it's talking to her saying, come out here. I want to talk to you. Come out here. And it was trying to get her to come outside of the house. It was a strange event. And the power of the Holy Ghost came over her. She got really angry, John, hmm. and began to speak out against it in the name of Jesus and said, I bind this thing in Jesus name and began to pray in the spirit with her heavenly language. She looked down to pet the dog and she looked up and it was gone hmm. and it had left. And then she began to rejoice, speak the word of the Lord and all this. And I believe it was a deception narrative. Now, I've studied that out a little more about these grays, these different entities people are talking about. You know how people, and this is going to get out on a limb a little bit, but I believe there's at least a little bit of backing in this that I could make a leap with this. And I'm going to try. And that's this, that the reason people get abducted and the reason things happen, I believe just like Genesis 6, they are continuing their nefarious uh, doings, mm -hmm. where they take people away, they get their DNA, they create things. And I believe it's highly possible because we know from John chapter three, John chapter two and three, when Jesus said to Nicodemus, you cannot be born again unless you are born of water and of spirit. To be born of water means you have to have a physical body to operate with any spiritual authority in this uh, world. Okay. So what I believe happens is they extract DNA, they create these little avatars, these little, you know, creature looking things. And there are demonic spirits that power them because I believe the demonic spirits from whether it's pre-edemic or if it's in the Old Testament, hmm. giants that died, foul, unclean spirits that Jesus drove out, you foul, unclean spirit. They weren't angels. They were foul, unclean spirits that needed to be in people. Angels don't do that. And when you look at this picture, it could be that that's exactly what that is. Demonically housed little avatar bodies that do these things to draw people to them wow. and they want to extract more DNA, do these things, but they, they bow the knee to the name of Jesus, just like everything else. That's one of the most encouraging things I've ever heard in a conversation about uh, the extraterrestrials, Nephilim or anything of that nature, because <laughs> Just as uh, anything, they bow to the name of Jesus because that is the name yep. that his name is the name that is above all names that we know That's that every right. knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. The uh, answer is the same, John. Yes. It's always the same. Yes. Jesus is Lord. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it's very, very interesting because as you were talking about this description of the, the grays, um, you know, we we have heard that angel that fallen angels will will parade around as uh, you know demons will will parade around as an angel of light. Um, That's correct. You know, another term I believe for that is you know, gray can also be looking in in that in that that could that could fit that description or fit that definition. Fascinating, yeah. Uh, that translation, wow. and so that's wow. kind of an interesting thing that we could, we maybe could go deeper in in another conversation because I'm having fun so. talking with you about this. <laughs> Same, um, John. But we're not getting crazy here because we're not we're not going down <laughs> and and saying that this is you know, not something that it's, it's too big for us. You're saying that the name of Jesus is the name that is above all names. And when your wife prayed in the spirit and, you know, stirred up within her, she commanded that thing in Jesus name and it was gone. Well, scripturally speaking in Luke chapter 21, it talks about there will be a day that men's hearts will fail them, mm. fail them. 
for things they can measurably and empirically watch that are coming down upon the earth. Hmm. That's what it says. And it means literally in the Greek, something that's from outside our atmosphere coming into our physical earth. Now, it doesn't say what that is, but it's something men will be able to observe mm -hmm. and be so terrified because they know they can't stop it. They know this is coming. They know they're going to have a confrontation with something that's so terrifying, their hearts fail. Yeah. Now, that's a strong thing to think about in John chapter 21, or Luke chapter 21, rather. When you see that happening, that could indeed be, maybe, this type of narrative. But what I do know is what you're saying, and I think it's so eloquent what you're saying, John, is that the word of the Lord, the revelation of Jesus, brings all this stuff to its knees. We realize our faith in 1 John is the power, the force that brings the world and all this wickedness to its knees. It has to bow at the name of Jesus. I've dealt with witches, warlocks, drinking blood in front of me, coming at my property, trying to show up at my place. I was in a graveyard one time, casting out demons, causing a, uh, cutting off generational curses. Then the, the demonic people that showed up the next week said uh, the demons came out of them and said, we were there in the graveyard last week. We were watching you hmm. and all this, and we're here to fight you today. And I'll tell you what, all of them, they bow the knee just the same to Jesus Christ. There's nothing new under the sun. Nothing should be terrifying about this. You just have to make it small in your eyes and make God very big in your eyes. And I'll tell you what, Jesus is Lord and the darkness, all of it, UFOs and all these little grays, they don't stand a chance at the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And that's <laughs> that's a great way to end that segment. I have one, <laughs> one more question for you. Sure. Uh, something that you mentioned earlier, and I wanted to ask about this. I just kind of... We we got, we went down a different path and I kind of forgot about it until now, but <laughs> awesome. that, that question or that comment really was, you kept saying that in back in 2020, we prophesied about, you know, Trump not winning the election for other reasons. Um, I, I only see one person and I, oh. you know, I, I know that you're not schizophrenic cause we, we've talked about right. that, uh, and you're not Thank speaking you. for multiple people, but I, just for our audience here, um, could you explain what you mean when you're saying we prophesied that or, um, yeah. So well, I appreciate <laughs> that, John. I, I, I have a hard time saying I, yeah. when I talk about prophecy. So, uh, the Holy spirit prophecies, the spirit of Jesus is the one that prophesies the Holy spirit prophesies through us. And so I will say we, a lot of times, and I'm referencing my team, I'm referencing, uh, the Holy ghost, uh, working as a great commission together with him. So I don't like to say, I said, you know, and all that, because I believe it's important. We bring glory to where glory is due and Jesus Christ is Lord. And, yeah. um, I can miss it but he can't. And if I ever miss it, it's because I wasn't listening clearly enough. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's what I mean by we. Yeah. And it's kind of a, uh, maybe I call it a Freudian slip. I'm thinking about uh, the Holy Spirit and my team. Yeah. And and I appreciate that you have a team with you. And I met, I met uh, some of your team while we were there at the NRB. And I like whenever people are not rogue prophets and you've got people that you are submitted to that you're very much you're so. traveling with that you're comparing words like this is what God's speaking to me is. and before you release it publicly you're going to uh, other people right. and you're comparing that and you know th there is there is wisdom in a multitude of counsel and so uh, in the right counsel not just general counsel but the right <laughs> counsel right. and that needs to be that's right the Lord. so um, but Joseph, would you just pray for our audience here that, you know, there's probably somebody that is dealing with some fear because of this AI yeah. tech, um, this, this alien Nephilim narrative that's subtle, but growing, um, oh, it's growing. but let's deal with fear because you, you spoke about something at the end before I, I, I just asked about this whole us, we thing. Um, you, you were that would have been a great place to wrap up. I just didn't want to leave. <laughs> just didn't want to leave it there. <laughs> but could you just kind of in that same spirit, just speak and, and pray uh, for oh, people that to, are kind John. of dealing with that issue? I'd love to. First of all, we know the word of God tells us in 1 John, he's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And Jesus said so clearly, I believe in John chapter 14, verse 1, he said, let not your heart be troubled. That means you're in charge of how you feel. You really are. So let me just pray this for your audience. And John, 
I just think you got a great audience. Charisma is so awesome. So Father, I begin to speak life over every viewer, everybody who's listening to John and I right now. I come against and I confront a spirit of fear. You get off, my friend. You get off of our viewers and our listeners right now. I bind you fear. Any anxiety that this topic brings up, I just want to simply say, rest in the peace of Jesus. Go to the written word of God. Read the Bible still. It starts talking back to you in your inner man. Keep going into the word of God. Pray in the spirit. Get the peace that passes all logical understanding or things that begin to assault you by your senses in this natural world. Jesus is not caught off guard. God's not in a bad mood. He's not sweating about the future. Neither should you. He who sits in the heavens laughs over these things. And I declare over your life on a bad day, you are anointed to be the very best there is. God has called you and he's equipped you for this time. So I break a spirit of fear and I release faith, love, power, and advancement in your calling in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Joseph Z. Amen. JosephZ.com if you want to get more information about him and get the book that he's referenced a couple different times during this conversation. But Joseph, it's great to have you here on Charisma News. And uh, let's do this again sometime. I appreciate it. What a privilege, John. Thank you so much. Love y'all.